5.12 a.m. Been up all night solving this murder. Mr. Portsman, I finished processing the bloody letters, sir. All right, let me take a gander at it. Pass it here. Okay, looking good. You there, take good care of this. Well, if it isn't Detective Gumshoe. End of the line for you, Portsman. We've got you now. Call off your dog, Mr. Edgeworth. Is this some kind of joke? All right, Minan. Thanks for coming by. Have a good night. It's no joke. We know, Mr. Jock Portsman, that you are the guilty party in this case. You must be pretty upset getting chased out of your own room. I'd be mad, too. So I guess you can stay, if you promise to stay out of our way. You intend to hide your crime under the guise of being a pro- under the guise of a prosecutor doing his job? Hm. I could see right through the unsightly, paper-thin mask you wear upon your cowl. Ha <laughs> ha! Who would have ever thought it would come to this? Actually, come to think of it, your mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? Huh. The legendary prosecutor who never lost a single case for 40 long years. But there was always this incessant chatter about forged evidence with that guy. Hmm. Really teaches me that I've got to stay on the lookout for false accusations, you know. Are you done trying to play mind games with me? Because they won't work. The only thing you should be using that mouth of yours for now is explaining yourself. Although that too will only dig your hole deeper. Either way, your game is up. Well, aren't we full of ourselves? Even though you have yet to prove anything. Alright, Anya Shani. Have a good night, friend. See you around. Don't be shy about hanging out on the discords with us. I have no idea what sort of harebrained idea you have in mind, but... There's a mountain of evidence that points away from me being the culprit. Besides, how, may I ask, do you propose I unlocked your door and got in here? Look, I feel bad doing this to you, but I've got work to do, so we're done here. Sorry, but we are not finished yet. Boy, you're stubborn. I suppose you're basing your accusations on something. What is... what is... Da, da, da. Okay, I was just checking to see. What said about his door. I'll show you what I'm basing my accusation on. With evidence! Frickin' evidence! Hard, solid, sexy evidence. Ooh, excuse me. I burped. How attractive. Let's see. There's a mountain of evidence that points away from me being the culprit. Hold it. Evidence such as what? Oh, and what, pray tell, kind of evidence are we talking about here? Jim was my partner, so you can't say I had a motive for killing him. And? That's it? That's not even an anthill, let alone a mountain. But it's more than enough, wouldn't you agree? Might I recommend that you review what the word evidence means? It doesn't change the fact that the evidence doesn't point to me as the killer. Besides, how, may I ask, do you propose I unlocked your door and got in here? Unfortunately, I believe I have already shown how earlier. Your speculations mean nothing, as I still insist that I could not gain access to your room. Uh, what does my organizer say? Stolen from security office... Whoops. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hang on, well, let's go back and check evidence. Let's see. 
I brought the three pieces of evidence by, just like we talked about on the phone, but it looks like you're out. Guess we'll catch up to you later, buddy. A pacifist route of sorts, you say, Seth. That's cool. Um... Da -da -da. Ms. Bird says she unlocked this door, but her prints were not found on the doorknob. Uh... Alright. Uh, should I raise an objection? Let's not raise an objection just yet. What's wrong? Don't tell me all you wanted to do was find fault with my flawless logic. Hold it. Hmm, I don't think so. Oh, and why is that? Because there is a flaw in your reasoning. Are you calling me a liar? So, where's your proof? The saying, evidence is everything, isn't limited to just the courtroom, you know. You need not remind me. I'll show you all the evidence you want in time. I never pressed him on this first point. Not that there's a reason to, but... My accusation is a harebrained idea, is it? You tell me. I'd say it is. After all... There's a mountain of evidence that points away from me being a culprit. Besides, how may I ask you propose I unlocked your door and got in here? Um, well... I would say he used the master key. Objection. That's the only way, right? So I guess I guess that's where we start. I believe you were able to um, open my office door with the master key, no less. Objection. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on for a sec. I never laid a finger on that key, as you already know. Precisely. You were able to open my door without lifting a single finger. Well, maybe you did, but only to direct. That's right, you used your finger to direct this person to open my door with the key, and that person would be Maggie Bird. You had asked Miss Bird to open your own office door for you, yes? Yeah, I kind of forgot my key at home. Happens a bit too often for my taste, you know. But the room you had, Ms. Bird, open at the time was not your own, was it? W what? You have quite the imagination. But why don't we ask the girl herself whose door she opened, shall we? Um, I'm certain that it was Mr. Portsman's door, sir. I checked the number plate to make sure I was opening the right door, sir. See, Ms. Bird backs up my story. Yet, what if you had misled her to fool her into thinking what you wanted? Huh, and how do you suppose I did that? By switching the number plates on our doors, for example! Ha 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 Yes! Switching the number plates! Bam! That's right! They do slide out pretty easily! Furthermore, you then used one other thing to give a very strong impression. That the door she was opening was yours, and not, in fact, mine. Oh, he must have moved the basketball hoop. Pick up. What? The basketball hoop, sir? It's quite the peculiar fixture in any hallway, let alone a hallway in this building. Which is why it left an unusually strong impression on you. It's an object perfectly suited to sit just outside the office of a peculiar prosecutor. Yeah! That's very true, sir, because there was a basketball hoop sitting there. I thought the door I was opening had to be Mr. Portsman's. There are signs that the hoop has been moved. To sit in front of my office, to be sure. I, I see. So that's how you throw suspicion on people. Thanks for the tip. But I think your conjecture is just a little off the racetrack. Alright, so far so good. Now you're just spouting nonsense. I had the girl open my office door. After that, I was in my room the entire time. 
You don't have a single reason to suspect me. Oh, I think we have evidence that suggests you were not in your room the entire time. So he intends to claim his evident innocence to the end, does he? I'm as pure and innocent as my jacket. And Ms. Bird is as dirty and guilty as the jacket she wears. My jacket's not dirty, I'll have you know. I just washed it yesterday. Please calm down, for I intend to show who is the one truly covered in slime here. Alright, uh, da -da -da. I had the girl open my office door. After that, I was in my room the entire time. Let's press him on this. And what were you doing in your office? I was doing my usual training regiment. Training regiment? Were you going through your law books from start to finish? Mainly batting practice and some weights. Oh, and I jog when I get the chance. Wow, you must be the buffest prosecutor we have. With the weakest legal muscles, it would seem. I was doing my usual workout, so... You don't have a single reason to suspect me. Um... What about this note that said he was not... in his room? I... <clears throat> I brought the three pieces of evidence by, just like we talked about on the phone, but it looks like you are out! Guess I'll catch up to you later! That was a lie. But what are you talking about? How was that a lie? This is a note that the victim left for you, Mr. Portsman. A note? It was left under your door. Or did you note it? Or did you not notice? And right here it says, but you're out. You were not in your room when the victim came to call on you. So then, where were you and what were you doing? Ah! Shall I explain it in full detail for you? You were busy snooping around in my room. The very room you had Miss Bird open for you. Th that's just nonsense! You have no evidence that I made the girl open your door for me. Oh, but I do. I have very decisive evidence. No way! This is proof positive that you had Miss Bird open the door for you. I think it's this this door. Her prints were not found on the doorknob. Take that. I had your door dusted for prints. My door? Ha! What for? Come on, I bet you didn't find anything. You sure are good at wasting time. You're right, I didn't find anything. And definitely not Miss Bird's fingerprints. Her prints? What do they have to do with anything? Let's put it this way, if she really was the one who opened your door, then her prints should naturally be on the doorknob she touched. Ack! Further, all of the prints on my office's doorknob have been wiped clean off. I can only assume it's because Ms. Bird's fingerprints were on it. Don't you think it's time you gave up your charade? We know you stole into my office with the intent of stealing something from me. And Detective Faith found you out. Possibly because he heard sounds coming from a room whose occupant was on leave. Mr. Porceman, you killed Mr. Faith to silence him. And I had the misfortune to return when I did. You had to threaten me as you escaped. As I said when you had the gun to my back, no one gets away with committing murder in my office. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and just what's so funny, pal? Well, that look of stiff seriousness on the face of this office's finest prosecutor, as he makes a huge mistake in accusing me, is simply too much to bear. There's just nothing else like it in the world. What? Mr. Edwards just explained it all, and he even backed it up. You're the murderer! Stop trying to be slippery and just admit to the crime already! 
And as I said earlier, it's all so circumstantial, so full of conjecture. You say you checked my doorknob for prints? Well, I can readily confess that I had wiped that knob down well. Eh? I'm a little obsessive compulsive, you see. I didn't want to touch a doorknob that you had touched. Which is why I wiped the knob down as soon as I could after you opened the door. After that, it makes perfect sense that only Jim's and my own prints would be on there. You, you made that up just now, didn't you? Furthermore, as for the note Jim left for me, do you know exactly when that was? For all we know, he could have left it there before I arrived at the office. Like early evening, for example. Are you saying you failed to notice a note in your doorway? Hey, even geniuses fail at times. I was probably too preoccupied by work-related matters, although that's no excuse. Now that's just a flat-out lie. There's no way you didn't notice a note that size. Ah, oh, but you can't prove that, can you? Hmm. Say something, Mr. Edgeworth. Back me up here, sir. Ugh, Portsman makes a good point. I can't prove that he didn't simply overlook it. Besides, I have an airtight alibi. Airtight, you say? I only realized that I had one just now as we were talking. I guess it would have been better for all of us if I had just told you sooner. Oh, here we go. If memory serves, you came back to this office at around 2 a.m., correct? And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. But at exactly that time, I was down in criminal affairs. Ask around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's the perfect alibi. Do you really think it's that perfect? Like I said, I don't care. Ask around all you like. You'll see for yourself. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, yes sir. I'll go check out this alibi, sir. Be right back. But Mr. Edgeworth, sir. I think we're in trouble. It's just like Mr. Portsman said. The guys down in criminal affairs said they saw him at around 2 a.m. You see? All of the evidence points to him being the culprit. So there must be a contradictory point in his alibi somewhere. <laughs> nice, Seth. Let's see. If memory serves, you came back to this office at around 2 a.m., correct? Let's press. You are correct. It was around 2 a.m. Are you sure? It's really important to me that you're spot on with the time. I remember checking my watch then, and make no mistake, it was 2. Oh, giving testimony like a pro. Okay, so you came back to your office at 2. And it was then that you had that unfortunate confrontation at gunpoint with the culprit. It is as you say. However... Yes, however, you are the only one who claims to have bumped into the culprit. So tell me, did you see the person's face? Was it me who you saw? It was pitch black, so I couldn't actually see. Objection! Oh, come now. I'm sure you saw something. Try a little harder, why don't you? I'm beginning to feel like I'm the one being interrogated here. Oh, well, it doesn't matter if you remember or not. It only matters that you ran into the culprit. But at exactly that time, I was down at criminal affairs. So you paid the criminal affairs department a visit. <laughs> yes, Nocturne. I'm, I'm looking for the punch option right now. <laughs> yep. Right after I left the prosecutor's building, I headed straight for the precinct. Ask around. I'm sure the other detectives will corroborate my story. It's the perfect alibi. Um... So, hang on a second. But I think... Oh, you know what? We haven't... We haven't... I didn't realize we could examine this. Huh. 
Well, let's go back. Hmm. Let's press on this. Hold it. Hmm. Well, we did go and ask around to confirm your testimony. And it was just as I said, right? Yes, sir. A number of detectives said that they saw you at, uh, saw you at around that time. See? I have the perfect alibi. That's the ace I had up my sleeve. Ugh. Impossible. He actually does have the perfect alibi. What's wrong? Why the sudden, sullen look on your face? Can't you say anything back, Mr. Edgeworth? Heh, <laughs> I think we've reached the end of the line, and it's time to get off this crazy train. You there? Sir. Please escort the young lady out, but remember, be gentle. M maggie Detective Gumshoe! Is there nothing I can do? There must be a way to turn this situation around. Just like Phoenix would do, right? If I only had a clue. Did I miss something that can help me cast doubt on his alibi? The intruder I met could not have been Portsman, then who could it have been? I need to calmly think this one through one more time, and with logic. So, hang on. The intruder I met could not have been Portsman, then who could it have been? Other than the victim's gum that I found, could there be another gun in play here? The culprit rearranged my files twice, once before and once after the murder. Why? Maybe there was a second culprit? <laughs> yes, Nocturne. Let's ask Phoenix for help. Let's phone a friend. Um. <clears throat> so, let's think. So I think Portsman's alibi must be connected with one of these two things. Maybe there is like a second culprit. Let's, let's, I think, I want to say that, hmm. I want to say that the alibi has to do with uh, another handgun. I'm not entirely sure why that would be. I think it has to do with the fact that maybe there was another... There's another culprit. Or if Portsmouth could have been there, then someone else was there, and that someone had the other handgun. I don't know. I think that's, I think this is, I think it's the, I think the connection is here. Let's try it. There were two bullets left at the scene of the crime. One that robbed Mr. Faith of his life. And one that nearly robbed me of my jacket. However, the murder weapon sh only shows signs of being fired once, meaning that it is entirely possible that a second gun was used in my office tonight. But seeing as how the killer had to steal Mr. Faith's gun, I doubt the killer had another gun up their sleeve. Therefore, the second gun could have been the property of an entirely different person, which could mean that there was another person who paid, the visit paid a visit to my office tonight. Another person! Dun dun da. <clears throat> so that would there's only two thoughts left to connect here. So 
Supposing there was yet another visitor tonight, that would also resolve the issue of why my shelves were upended twice. We know that the shelves were disturbed once before and once after the murder, so it shouldn't be much of a stretch to think that it was the work of two different people. Once by the person who stole the victim's gun and then killed him with it, and once again after the murder by our second culprit, who was the owner of the second gun. <clears throat> if we suppose that the second culprit's gun was the one that was pointed at my back, Mr. Portsman, it seems that I need to amend my assumptions regarding this case. Great, so you finally come to your senses. Mr. Edgeworth! Sir, what are you saying? This has been a big misunderstanding on my part from the start. I had assumed that the person I ran into was the killer, but that may not be the case. What do you mean? The person I ran into was just your average thief. A thief? But, sir... Doesn't that cause some sort of contradiction in the facts? Not at all. It simply means that the killer was someone else. And it means that in actuality, two culprits stole into my office tonight. But what do you mean, two? It explains both why my shells were disturbed twice and how there were two guns. Mr. Portsman tricked Ms. Bird and gained entry into my office. <clears throat> Now you're just leading the argument. You still don't have any actual proof, you know. If you could please go along with my hypothetical scenario for now, Mr. Portsman. In the end, if you really are innocent, you should have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Now then, returning to my scenario, Mr. Portsman was out to steal something from me. Which is why he checked my secret safe and ransacked my shelves. This is the first time. So then, this would be when the f files were put back in the wrong order, right? Correct. And then, just when he was about to look somewhere else, who should walk in but his own partner, Mr. Faith? But why did Mr. Faith come into your room, sir? He probably had business with Mr. Portsman, which is why he was in the area. But that's when he noticed sounds coming from my office would be my guess. Oh, because you were supposed to be away, right? And he must have thought it was odd, so he came to this office to check it out. Correct. And as a detective, that was the right thing to do. But when he came in, he found his own partner standing there. Because it was Mr. Portsman, Mr. Faith probably let his guard down. But Mr. Portsman was not so merciful as to let him leave alive. He waited for a chance and stole Mr. Faith's gun from him, and then... He killed him. He silenced Mr. Faith for catching him in the act of stealing. This was the moment in which the first shot was fired, and the one that landed in my files. Following that, Mr. Portsman wiped the gun down and left it behind as he made his exit. He could afford to do that because he also left the fake dying message behind. You're such a complicated troublemaker, you know that? Well, if things were as simple as that, then all would be solved. However, there was yet another visitor to my room, and this is where it gets complicated. There was another... Visitor, sir? Yes, and this other person, this person's objective was also to steal something from me. Now then, even after Mr. P Mr. Portsman left, the door to my office remained unlocked. However, this new visitor had no way of knowing that, and so, they stole the master key from the security guard's room, and then entered my room and searched through my shelves. This was the second time they were disturbed, and it seems the thief found their prize. The stolen zero file, right, sir? Correct. Only, just as the thief was about to leave with the file, I appeared. The thief then threatened me with their own gun and made their escape. The second bullet was fired during that brief encounter. So the shelves getting messed up twice in the two bullets. It was all because two different people were doing those things at two different times. Precisely. So now do you see, Mr. Portsman? The person I met was just a thief and was not, in fact, Mr. Faith's killer. Your alibi for the time frame in which I ran into the other person is now irrelevant. Because we now know that the murder took place during the first culprit's visit. Objection! <clears throat>
<laughs> What's so funny, pal? Absolutely splendid. Your scenario explains everything. Of course it does. It's Mr. Edgeworth, after all. But you know, it still doesn't change the fact that it's all circumstantial. Supposing if, and that's a big if, your theory is right. It would indeed render my alibi, which has withstood scrutiny, mind you, irrelevant. But there is still one defining point of your argument for which you have no evidence. Your supposition that I was the first visitor. Ah, Mr. Edgeworth, you can't let him get away with that, sir. Hmm, but he has a point. I have absolutely no proof at this point. Don't say that, sir. I don't believe this. Don't worry, Maggie. I'll do something if I must. You know, you know something. I find your attitude to be somewhat peculiar, Mr. Edgeworth. <clears throat> That's right. All I need is circumstantial evidence, right? Right? Of course I do. No, I need decisive evidence. If the person you met really was just a plain old thief, then why is that per- uh, 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 Excuse me. Oh, God. And why is that person not your main suspect? That is, if your theory is correct. Oh, here we go. Portsman's Alibi, Part 2. That thief you ran into should be a real suspect. Why wouldn't you say? We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. I hate to repeat myself, but as I've already said, I was training in my room. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence for me, I was down at Criminal Affairs. So I can't be expected to know what happened around here after I left. So you think we should be out there looking for the thief? Of course. Now isn't the time to be wasting time on dead-end discussions. I don't think it's at all dead-ended. I find your alibi to be fascinating. Let's continue where we left off, shall we? No? Huh? I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. Alright. <clears throat> so, let's see. Let's press him on everything. Actually, no, I wouldn't. W why not? That's elementary. The dying message, of course. Mr. Faith's killer very clearly left those letters on the spines of those files. And it was after they were it was after they were on there that the thief stole one of them. You mean the zero files, right? And that's how we also know the letters themselves were set up, and not from Mr. Faith. If the thief was the killer, do you think they would try to undermine themselves? Ah! Uh, maybe the killer just didn't think of that earlier? Yes, that must be it. Maybe, just maybe. We should be out there looking for that thief right now. They might still be nearby. <clears throat> Once escaped, I highly doubt a thief would linger nearby. Well, you never know. Maybe they didn't get what they were really after. Oh, you talk like you know quite a bit about this thief. Ah, uh, it's nothing like that. I have no idea about anything, after all. I hate to repeat myself, but as I've already said, I was training in my room. But according to Mr. Faith's note... Hold on, I thought we already cleared that up. Didn't we say that Jim left that note for me in the early evening? If you have proof that he left it at a different time, say just before he was murdered... I don't have any, no. You see? So I insist again that I was in my office the entire time. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence to me, I was down at Criminal Affairs. How would he... So... Since... How would he know... So here's the thing. If if he claims that Jim left the note in the early evening, why would he say that Jim came to deliver evidence to him when he was down at Criminal Affairs? So I think... Do we want to present the note? Whoops. So let's present this. Objection. 
It would behoove you to take a good look at this. Oh, I think I did the wrong thing. I should have pressed him. I should have pressed him. I did that wrong. You're not at the top of your game today, are you, Mr. Genius Prosecutor? I think I jumped the gun there. Hold it. Why didn't you go there with G Mr. Faith? Ah, uh, that's because he said he was tired and was going to go take a quick nap. You know those sofas in the hallway? He likes to sleep on those. It's one of his habits. And one of the evidence he brought. There were things related to yesterday's case. Just two items, a gun and a pendant. Interesting. This piece of testimony seems too crucial to let slip through the cracks. Ah, I should have pressed him first. He brought me two items, a gun and a pendant, that are related to yesterday's case. A gun and a pendant? Yes, this gun, which was the murder weapon. And this pendant, which belonged to the victim. And why were you taking them to criminal affairs? There was something in a past case file I wanted to compare these two to. But all this has nothing to do with this case right now. Anyway, I believe you'll find the long paper trail I left to be to your satisfaction. Hmm, this is all matching up with what Detective Gumshoe found out. So I can't be expected to know what happened around here after I left. Hold it. I can't expect you to know, can I? Nope, but I guess you can expect me to take a guess based on logical deductions. Oh, then let's see you deduce. Jim waited for me to leave, and then he stole the master key. For the purpose of sneaking into your room, of course. And that's when Ms. Bird caught him red-handed, and the murder occurred. It's all exactly as I laid out earlier. I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. So let's see. Da -da -da -da. Oh, 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 that's the contradiction. Brought two items, but the letter says three. The letter mentioned three items. Objection. Okay, there we go. I had the right idea, but I didn't have the right testimony. Only two pieces? I believe the proper phase, phrase here is, you fail. I excuse me. You fail as a prosecutor, Mr. Portsman, as you intend to keep evidence hidden from me. What are you talking about? I haven't hidden anything from you. Well, here's a piece I think you should read carefully. Ah, it says that Mr. Faith is bringing three pieces. Yes, and this is the victim's real dying message to you, Mr. Portsman. He, I can't believe to get tripped up by simple arithmetic. That's why you learn math, kids. That's why you learn math. Where is the missing piece of evidence? I... it's... You have it, don't you? Only the guilty would make such a face. Detective Gumshoe. You don't have to say it, sir. I'll pat the guy down from head to toe. What? Don't come any closer. I'm warning you. This is all part of the investigation, pal. So don't even think about stopping me. No! Hey, what's this? He had this on him, sir. Despite what you said, it would appear that you do have something to hide. But why would he hide something like that? <laughs> There's only one reason why anyone would hide evidence of this caliber. Because it would unequivocally point to that person himself as the real killer. <laughs> Let's examine this videotape in a little more detail. For the section of the tape that will drive the last nail into his coffin. Oh, let's see. Um, let's examine this. The KG-8 incident? That's a police case. That's a police case number, sir. Does that mean this video is evidence from that case? Interesting. However, what's recorded on this isn't what's important right now. Let's give the casing a thorough once-over. Oh, blood! 
Ah, that's blood, isn't it? Yes, and I believe this is what the good prosecutor was trying to hide from us. This blood is still fresh. You mean this might be Detective Faith's blood? No, 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 you've got it all wrong. Hmm, no one out of that. <laughs> no amount of denial can save you. We have but to run a blood test to find the truth. You told us that you had received evidence from the victim earlier. Now you will tell us when and how did the victim's blood find its way onto this video. Yeah, it's totally suspicious. Was it at the moment of his death? Did Detective Faith have this videotape on his personage when you killed him? You know very well there's no way to prove that. Not even if we are examining this tape for fingerprints. Yeah. If I had to take a guess, I'd say that the only ones on here would belong to the murderous you and Mr. Faith. No! Impossible! I... I'm... I... Oh, oh. They swallowed his medal. Oh, God, he choked on his medal. And passed out. Mr. Portsman has been placed under arrest for the murder of Detective Buddy Fate, sir. Very good. And the results we got back from the lab techs on the tape turned out to be real solid, sir. The blood work came back, and it's definitely Mr. Fate's blood on there. And as a bonus, they were also able to lift a few of Mr. Fate's fingerprints as well. Thank you so very much, Mr. Edgeworth. I still can't believe I got to see your cool deduction skills outside the courtroom. I am impressed beyond words, sir. It was nothing. I'm just sorry you got caught up in a murder in my office. Please accept my apologies. <clears throat> oh gosh, my voice is getting really worn out. Oh, uh, it was nothing really, compared to what I've been through, I mean. I consider myself lucky in that it was only a burglary and a murderer this time, sir. If it had been a holdup or a hostage situation, I'd, I'd have thrown my hands up in the air. I think I'm finally rising up from a goddess of misfortune to just an unlucky person. Something tells me we should have hired a different person for security detail. <laughs> you know something, sir? That Mr. Portsman really was one corrupt prosecutor. And why would you say he was corrupt? Well, I heard that there were a number of suspicious things related to his court cases. There's even rumors about how some of the evidence he uses is forged, sir. Forged evidence, huh? And they say he even decided not to prosecute a few cases for some really vague reasons. Oh, that guy was a complete disgrace to the entire profession. We never did get around to asking what reason was... Ah, we never did get around to asking what his reason was for breaking into my office. Yeah. Whenever we got near that topic, he just clammed up. Although we can be pretty certain that it was to steal something. This is just between you and me, sir, but there's a rumor that some sort of huge organization is involved behind the scenes. A huge organization, you say? Oh, no. Oh, well, well. With Mr. Portsman not willing to divulge anything, it certainly leads credence to that rumor. certainly lends credence to that rumor. I cannot read words correctly tonight. It would seem that we haven't heard the last of this. Huh? Then Mr. Portsman isn't the bad guy. I didn't say that, but rather that there are still many more mysteries for us to solve. For example, we still haven't figured out the significance to this piece of evidence. Um, which piece of evidence would that be? Oh, the stolen Zero Series file. I believe. The person who stole this file, the other villain of the night. Yeah, I wonder who it was. And what happened to the stolen pages? I wonder, who in the world was it that held me up at gunpoint? Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Yes? I came across this while I was processing your office earlier, sir. This card. Ooh, what's this? What is it, sir? Is that a bird or something on there? It's not just any bird. Is the mark of the raven, a three-legged raven. 
or a three-eyed raven. Bum bum ba da dum bum ba da dum bum ba da dum bum. Oh, sorry, no, sorry. Even you should know what this is, detective. Oh, it's about that thing, isn't it? That great thief everyone's talking about? Yes, it is the mark of the great thief Yada Garasu. Under the mark of a legendary bird, the Yada Garasu is noble to the end, a modern Robin Hood. Labeled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yada Garasu appears and vanishes at will. Though we don't know much about this thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. The Yada Garasu likes to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. The theft is always performed in silence, and always with perfection. Once a target is chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement is sent forth. Instead, the chosen corporation is infiltrated without even the target noticing. Some days later, the evidence that was found is sent out to the mass media. Along with this single card. Although, it has been a while since the Yadagarasu's last appearance. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, look! Something's written on the back! What? Let me see. It's the location of where the thief put the stolen files! So the person who stole the contents of the file was the Yadagarasu? Yadagarasu. Organization. Quite a few key words are popping up in this mystery. The murder in my office. The return of the great thief Yadagarasu. Looking back, I can't say I didn't see these events coming. For they were heralded by the incidents that began to occur two days ago. Ooh. Organization and secret thieves and incidents. Oh my. Alright, we did it! We finished the first case! Yay! Alrighty, guys. 